Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out in above the Heavenly Backyard Garden right now on my balcony and today is Friday, August the 2nd. And we just had a thunderstorm pass across our area, but it uh, wasn't too much here as opposed to what we had in the last several days, but it, it looks like it's uh, really hefty over on the islands right now. All along coastal Georgia and southern coastal South Carolina, hefty thunderstorms moving across those regions. You can probably maybe even hear some of the thunder in the background still rumbling from that system. It's now between 2.30 and 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Anyway, the question doesn't concern what's going on out here in the heavenly backyard garden, but what's going on in the tropics? The National Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on that system over in the Bahamas, uh, eastern portions of Cuba, and they designated it as a potential tropical uh, depression number four. And they have it uh, moving into the eastern Gulf of Mexico and developing into possibility, most likely, tropical storm Debbie. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, expect possibility of some very heavy rain Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So with that being said, let's go to the maps. All right, I'm inside right now looking at the satellite imagery. There you can see a tense line of showers and thunderstorms across the coastal areas of Georgia into South Carolina. And looking at the um, lightning associated with it, yeah, there's quite a bit of lightning uh, coming in with these thunderstorms as they slowly progress to the east. Right now, I would assume the islands are getting some very hefty rains across the, that area there. So uh, let's zoom out just a little bit more and let's go over into the uh, radar maps right now. and. Here we have the uh, Doppler radar uh, showing some hefty thunderstorms across the eastern counties of Georgia and all of, all of coastal areas of, South, of Georgia and, and into uh, southern South Carolina. And looking at a closer view of the situation, it shows, uh, again, the eastern counties of the eastern portions of the uh, Chatham County and uh, uh, over into Liberty County and uh, McIntosh County. Some very hefty thunderstorms moving across that area. Lesser thunderstorms, thunder showers almost uh, over across the interior portions of southeastern Georgia. But I'm more concerned about this, the tropical situation, because uh, here we have a potential tropical storm developing. Uh, first of all, it's potential uh, tropical depression, number four, and right here and going into the uh, 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 weekend and then becoming a tropical storm off the southwest coast of Florida. Let's zoom in on this right now. And this will be by Saturday uh, in the um, uh, early morning hours right off the coast of Sarasota and then perhaps crossing in and around the Tampa Bay area, uh, moving across into northeastern Florida around the Jacksonville area and then cutting across St. Mary's into uh, uh, Camden County, southern portions of Glen County, then off the coast of Georgia and off the coast of South Carolina and off the coast of North Carolina. That's if the storm follows this path. Now, the d different models are showing different situations. Let's take a look at the satellite imagery first of all. And I want to show you this uh, over here. There's the storm right over here uh, in the um, uh, Caribbean, moving into the Southwest Atlantic Ocean, into the Bahamas right now. And as you can see, it's also producing some lighting. It's starting to get a little bit better organized at this time. A little bit of a circulation trying to develop uh, at this hour. There's the southern tip of Florida, the Florida Keys right there. So let's take a look at uh, something else I want to show you, the water temperature. This is the fuel supply that, uh, that uh, uh, serves any type of tropical system. Uh, the warmer the water, the more energy that's available for use in the development of severe weather conditions. And uh, the reddish orange areas are water temperatures in the mid 80s. And over here off the coast of Florida, uh, there you can see the waters are, are a little bit warmer. Uh, these lighter pink areas here, are almost uh, going to white, are temperatures in the upper 80s over here uh, are, uh, around the um, uh, Sarasota area of Florida. Those water temperatures are in the low 90s right now. Unbelievably warm water. So there's a lot of energy to tap into once this storm gets into the eastern Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Georgia. Um, there's the cooler shelf waters off the coast from the rivers uh, draining into the ocean, but there's the Gulf Stream there, and the Gulf Stream is also in the middle 80s at this time. All right, let's take a look at the uh, models right now, and this is the global forecast system, and uh, let me bring it up just a little bit higher, and there we have it right there, and let's put this into motion. Now, uh, the global forecast system is the U.S. model, and it has the storm cutting in across central, west central Florida, uh, 
and then moving off the northeast coast of Florida, off the east coast of Georgia and South Carolina. Well, that's the GFS impersonation of this system, or representation of this system. Then it begins to wind up uh, as it moves across the uh, coastal waters of North Carolina. And then it doesn't move very much. Then it, then it works. Then it starts moving back to the northeast, moving up the uh, east coast, southeast coast, mid-Atlantic coastal states as a relatively strong storm. Uh, let's take a look at the Canadian model. And uh, this model here is a little bit further west than what the GFS has in uh, store. And it has the storm moving over those warm waters of the eastern Gulf of Mexico and staying off in the water there, uh, sucking up the moisture and the heat out of the water, transferring that into uh, energy and into uh, uh, heavy rains and winds. And look at the heavy rains. It's, whoa, look at the heavy rains across southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina. This is for uh, sunrise on Monday. So Sunday night, Monday, according to this model, if it is right, the storm will be a little bit further to the west of us, to the west, and then uh, that would cause the system to be uh, in this core where you have more severe weather. Usually the more severe weather is on the eastern side of a tropical system when it's over uh, land in the southeast United States. And then putting it into motion, it slowly works its way uh, northeastward across central South Carolina. This is a uh, sunrise on Tuesday. So Sunday, Monday, and uh, early Tuesday could be very wet and windy and uh, uh, severe weather conditions around our area here. Well, let's look at one other model. First of all, the, um, the German model called the Icon. Uh, that system shows the rain, again, actually between the GFS and the uh, Canadian model, moving right up the coast of Georgia and right into southern South Carolina is a very heavy rainmaker, some strong winds associated with it as well. This is for two o'clock Tuesday afternoon, and then it moves it, well, not much, very slowly off the northeast and east coast of Florida, and then it stalls it in that area there, uh, perhaps producing some very heavy rainfalls across eastern South Carolina, northeastern South Carolina, eastern North Carolina, uh, as it passes through uh, to the east of uh, uh, away from Georgia at that time. This is now uh, early, uh, actually 11 o'clock Wednesday night. All right, um, I want to look at the rainfall. There it is. The rainfall here uh, shows the total rainfall from the GFS model with it being more to the east of us, it'll be moving more offshore. But the purple area here is uh, anywhere from uh, uh, four to five inches, six inches. The golden area there, that's up to 10 to 12 inches of rain. Uh, that's the GFS model if it follows that. Now, if it follows the, um, the Canadian model, let's go to that right here, uh, that shows a little bit of a different story. More of the rain is to the west of us, and that's going to produce uh, uh, moderate to heavy rains if this model is correct. Uh, and uh, you wonder why I'm bald, you know. <laughs> which model to pick, which one is more uh, sufficient to use and so forth. That's where the National Hurricane Center comes in handy because they know a lot what's going on with these different models and so forth and so on. So, you know, don't look at the models. Really look at what the National Hurricane Center is saying and your local National Weather Service, what they're saying. Uh, anyway, uh, this shows very heavy rains across eastern Georgia and South Carolina, uh, 10 to 12 inches in some locations out in there, uh, 8 to 12 inches, whatever. Uh, and then the, um, the, uh, the icon model uh, shows, uh, again, a, a blend between the two. So we're going to have to keep that in mind. Uh, the ECMWF hasn't come in yet, but I do have an idea um, right here, the, uh, the FAST model here. And it shows the storm uh, following more of like the Canadian model uh, forecast here and then moving uh, across southeastern Georgia and then moving uh, just to the east of the coast of Georgia and South Carolina, producing very heavy rains and moving back toward Charleston, South Carolina, then moving back inland into South Carolina. So that's going to produce quite a bit of rain across portions of South Carolina, even into eastern Georgia and the upper portions of southeastern Georgia. So we're just going to keep an eye on this. Now, uh, let's go to the National Hurricane Center. Once again, uh, uh, follow their track. Follow their track. Uh, and uh, right now, it looks like uh, they're 
taking the blend of all the different models and putting them together and bringing potentially heavy rains across our region and some strong winds too. And if it goes a little bit further west, once again, uh, we could see the potential for more tornado activity. Those be strong gusty winds and damaging winds uh, and short-lived tornadoes uh, as a, the squalls pass across the area. So here we have the potential for uh, four to six inches of rain across the coastal counties of Georgia. Uh, the heavy rains certainly off the coast. Again, if this goes further to the west, uh, this will be further inland. And uh, anyway, even into central and uh, central South Carolina and Georgia, the rainfalls will be anywhere from two to four inches. So uh, significant rains are quite likely across uh, our region. Even central Florida is going to get very heavy rains out of that as well. Well, thanks for watching. And we're going to keep an eye on that system for you right here on my Pat's Weather and Nature YouTube channel and uh, I'll keep you posted with the events uh, of the storm as it approaches our area. But right now, it appears that moderate to heavy rains will be the key issue and perhaps uh, very heavy rains of four to six inches, maybe even more rain in some locations. So what does that have to keep an eye on that? Now, if the storm goes further to the west, that'll put us in the eastern quadrant of the storm and that would mean more potential severe weather in the form of tornadoes. If it goes further to the east, uh, that would mean lesser chances for severe weather and most of the rain and winds would remain offshore. But anyway, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. It looks like Saturday, Sunday, and Monday will be the peak periods for this uh, potential storm to pass across our area. And I'd like to thank all my supporters who have helped me maintain this page. Uh, there are some of the uh, 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 names right there. Thank you very much. And if you would like to help support my channel, I have ways in the uh, description box below as how you can help uh, with my page. Um, you don't have to, uh, and, and, but if you would like to hit the like uh, button, that's always a very helpful uh, situation. And also, if you'd like to leave a comment, please leave a comment uh, on the page itself right there in the comment section below. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and now I'll keep you posted right here on my Pat's Weather and Nature YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.